Island Boulevard and the 5 Freeway. Call 818-768-7373. And don't miss our ice cream fountain, Saturday night car night, and all your Bob's favorites plus more. Bob's Big Boy in Sun Valley, California at Sullen Boulevard and the 5 Freeway. Right now, every time you buy something, anything with your Discover card, you automatically have a chance to win up to a million dollars. So if I bought brown loafers, I could win a million dollars? Yep. A riding mower? That too. How about my morning coffee? Uh-huh. Afternoon coffee? Sure thing. Late night coffee? You bet. I kind of like coffee. I can tell. Remember, using your Discover card could make you a millionaire. Learn more at discover.com. It pays to discover. Visit discover.com slash giveaway for alternate entry options. PM show nationwide, coast to coast on CRN Digital Talk Radio. How you doing? Hi to our new listeners in Southern California. Coming to you on the Spa 1510. K Spa, talk from the Spa. WBIX, talk radio in Boston. WFYL in Philadelphia. WPIX. I guess that's a television station in New York. We're not on that one over there. But we are on a lot of stations around the country, and we thank you so much. And cable systems, too. Time Warner, Cox Cable. On our show today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very excited because we have a guy who uh, is a Hall of Fame uh, radio personality, television personality. This guy announced for the Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour, the Bobby Darren TV show. He was on the Perry Como specials, Bing Crosby TV specials, national TV shows, did national commercials, did billboards, did national sponsors, hosted things. We're going to find out about him, he and his buddy Johnny Carson in local television in Los Angeles. That was a, a great story that we'll get into. Radio at uh, the famed KMPC and other stations around the country. And back in the day, back when radio personalities started out, they had their own theme song. They had the music that when you heard it, you knew it was you know, the so-and-so show from such-and-such -such city. And this uh, was the RC get-together for Roger Carroll. So if we could, we can uh, get uh, Mr. Carroll ready to go and play his theme so he can come in and announce himself. Go ahead, hit it, please. <laughs> Take it, RC. RC get together. Here's Sinatra. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, it's RC Roger Carroll. Welcome, Roger, to the show. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, young man. I enjoy, and you enjoy, playing radio. It's still fun, isn't it? It still is good fun over there. That was the theme for how many years at KMPC Radio in Los Angeles? Twenty-two. 22 years. And 26 on Armed Forces Radio around the world. When we come back, you're going to do it again because I want you to hear it uh, the normal way you did it with the best sounds in town. Come on. That's the way you started it out. We're going to, next, you get, that was your warm up. We're going to do it again in a second. But Roger Carroll, I gave all these accolades to you here. You literally, people heard you over the country on the Smothers Brothers, Bobby Darren, Perry Como, Bing Crosby. I mean, what was that like back in the day of television, being the announcer for all these incredibly great shows? Well, actually, it was very fortunate being at the right place at the right time. And yet, I, I didn't actually announce the original uh, Bing Crosby shows or Perry Como. Uh, I got them when the older guys retired. Is that what happened? Yeah, happy. Yeah, happened to be at the right time at the right place and they were great to work with they were all class and uh, you know the, you're a professional and uh, everything you learned well let me tell you about Bing Crosby I must tell you the first time I did the Crosby show I went out and it was uh, he had all of his kids on and I went out on stage and I said I can't believe that I'm here I sat back in Frederick Maryland and wondered someday if I'd either be in Hollywood or New York and now here I am on stage introducing Bing Crosby, who's going to come out and say hello to you, and I'm the announcer on the show. And I introduced him, and he came out, and then before we started rolling the tape, he looked at me and he said, you really meant that. I said, yes, I was going to tell did. you, you really meant that. I'm, I'm really guy. impressed. I never thought I'd be standing here uh, introducing you 
to the world, you know. So you were born and raised in Frederick, Maryland, is that correct? Yes. And, and then from... The home of Barbara Fritchie. Who's Barbara Fritchie? Barbara Fritchie was sort of, uh, I don't think she was a prostitute. <laughs> she was like Betsy Ross. Oh. She made a flag and entertained uh, the... Uh, really? Yes. Yeah, so it was adult, turning... it's kind of adult programming. <laughs> If you would say. She had a flag. That's oh. right. <laughs> so you and uh, Barbara... Had a, red, had a red blinking light in front of her house. You and Barbara Fritchie were uh, two of the biggies to come out of uh, Frederick, Maryland. And, and well, what... everything in, in Frederick, it's a lovely town. It really is a beautiful city. And, of course, where all the dairy farms were, where I grew up, it's all grown up now. But uh, Barbara Fritchie sat here. Barbara Fritchie ate here. Okay, we Barbara get the ID. We understand. We, we understand, Barbara Fritchie. You wouldn't Fritchie. happen to have her telephone number, yes. would you? have <laughs> a number so you give her a call. Uh, who said that? That's Paul Stern right there. Oh, hi, Paul. When I hear Barbara Fritchie, that gets my attention. <laughs> okay, so, so your first radio job was back on the East Coast? WFMD. Where? Uh, Frederick, Maryland. Oh, wow. What kind of format did they have at that time? Well, it was a CBS affiliate. And for radio guys, you might appreciate this. Uh, I was 15 at the time, and uh, I would work in the summertime, and during uh, school I'd do the morning show until 9, go to school, come back. And like in the evening, uh, Major Lawrence Leonard was the owner of the station. Major, would Major call, Lawrence Leonard, I like that name. He would call and say, I have some friends up here, we're having cocktails, and we're talking about Hawaii, could we have an hour of Hawaiian music? Uh, Major Leonard, we're on the CBS network, we're commercial. He said, that's all right, just fade out and play some Hawaiian music until I call. So you would fade away from the programming from the CBS network, maybe the Jack Benny show, that's right. and bring up an hour's worth of Hawaiian music? That's right. And I don't know if you remember, Mike, uh, you ever heard of Standard Library? No. Well, they used to, the music used to come on 16-inch discs. Oh, okay, yeah, you're talking about the regular production music, right? Right. No, music, period. Johnny Pineapple and his serenaders, and a script would come with everything. So you would actually be able, through the script, introduce Johnny That's Pineapple. That's how I learned to wow. pronounce Hawaiian names. Wow. And more important, where I learned classical names, when his wife would call, Eve would say, play an hour of classical music. And, and so then they, I learned how to say Sanson and stuff like that. Sanson, yes. when I took the ABC ad audition, I was the only guy out of 24 guys who could pronounce Calliope. Now, wait a second. So when you became a network staff announcer for ABC, they actually had an audition where you had to pronounce certain things? Oh, yes. It was the, NB it was the NBC audition because ABC was part of NBC. It was the NBC Red and NBC oh. Blue. I went to work with them after the antitrust in 1947, split the network, and ABC was owned by Ed Noble. And you know what we got every year for Christmas? What did you get from Ed Noble at ABC every Christmas? Package of 12 rolls of Lifesavers. You know why? Why? He owned Lifesavers. So that was your Christmas gift? That's right. Were they the peppermint or were they the multicolored ones? No, they didn't. <laughs> I don't think they had the multicolored ones at that time. That was probably a pretty big deal. Nowadays, with the economy the way it is, that sounds like better than a lot of people got at their That's Christmas That's true, but your year. listeners have to understand, I'm an old guy. I've really? been around the broadcasting business all my adult life, starting at 15. And now I'm retired, living the good life, and talking to young guys like you. Well, I like that. Now, when we come back, Roger Carroll, we want you to and I'm going to play the same music again, but I want to hear the whole intro, the way you did it with the welcome to the best sounds in town. You know, maybe it's brought to you by the House of Sight and Sound, possibly, okay? I'm sorry you had to bring that up. Yeah, I just, you know, you were sponsored, I know, at the time. They used to sponsor, like, half hours and hours of the program, and you were kind of like the music guy. You always played the best music in the evening. Remember his show, Paul Stern? You're I know, native... but wasn't there a place called Wallach's Music City? Yeah, I think he was sponsored. You were sponsored no, by... No, that was Ira Cook. Oh, Ira Cook oh, was sponsored I by Wallach's. It's a com right. competition. Don't bring that up. I'm Same station. But stay with us, because the RC get-together will continue on CRN Digital. Digital Talk Radio, the PM Show. Do you want a wireless laptop, but your credit score is holding you back? We can help. Guaranteed.